suddenly the stitches were just... Wish me luck. I'm Nora, and this is also known as Nora Nets. Hello there, I'm Nora, and you're watching also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for another podcast episode today. If you cannot tell, it's a little bit earlier than I usually film. If you cannot tell, we're developing a bit of a cold sore. If you cannot tell, I haven't had my coffee yet. So <laughs> that's where we're starting today. But I wanted to make sure that I showed up and filmed this before I head over to my parents' house today because I want to show you dad's sweater. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive on in. So of course I will be getting into the whole ordeal that dad's sweater is. And, and let me tell you, it is an ordeal. But I figured first I would show you my finished object. I... I'm still torn to me. This is a finished object, but I am trying to keep my count up timer going until it is fully blocked off the mats, ready to wear. And so it is not that yet. This is simply, it's it's done being knit. <laughs> and that is my Cyclamen sweater by Cecilia Garcia Rodrigo. I like tossed it all around here. Here we go. This is exactly what I wanted it to be. So we have a V-neck raglan sweater from the top down. I knit this up using five millimeter needles in the majority of the body and then four millimeter needles for the ribbing. And I have knit the size six in this pattern. So I honestly, oh, last, when we left off last, I was about to rip back, I think, still for the ribbing because I had made some errors. And yes, I discovered that in the pattern, the back hem where you are to start was written basically opposite of what it should have been. So it was telling you to purl when you should have knit and knit to knit when you should have been purling. So it was easy enough to identify. I did go ahead and rip back. I knit the back ribbing. I knit the front ribbing a little bit shorter than the back. So that's not in the pattern. In the pattern, she says to just knit both the front and the back at the same length. And so I just gave my front hem, I think I knit my front hem to the 10 centimeters. That is recommended for both in the pattern, which is also what the cuffs are knit at. And then I just added another inch or so to the back. The reason I love this sweater so much is for the detail that is under the arms. Like I said, this has not yet been blocked, so it's still pretty bunchy. But under the arm, the whole way down, through the body, into the split hem, there is this two by two ribbing detail that I just think is one of those things when you're talking a basic sweater, something oversized, something relaxed, those little details make all of the difference. And so I was very happy to have done that. And that's kind of the whole theme with this sweater is that it's two by two ribbing all around. I knit this up in Karen Blossom Cakes in the colorway Cabana. And at this point, I'm really happy with where we're at. It's perfectly just big, cozy, oversized. And the cutaways here, I'm sure that you could see that the sleeves as they are right now are pretty long. I was thinking that, first of all, I'd rather them be too long than too short as this is supposed to just be my like cozy take place of a sweatshirt sweater. Um, but I also figure because I would like to block them to get a little bit more width out of this ribbing, I'm assuming that's going to take away from the length just a little bit. So even as the rest of the body relaxes, I'm imagining that that won't too much. I also have worked with this yarn before and I have blocked this yarn before. So I know that the way that it behaves is not that it's going to stretch out too much. So 
At this point, I'm very happy with the way things are going. There's a few things with how things are laying, and I think that's based off of the raglan shape. If it hasn't been clear yet, the raglan actually kind of starts all at one point, and that's all right on the side of the neck here, right at the, the point of the shoulder, such that it actually even comes up into a point. And I feel like what that is doing right now before blocking is that it's kind of creating these little like tents <laughs> of fabric that want to bunch up in everything that's sort of dedicated to the front panel of the sweater where anytime I've knit a raglan in the past it's typically kind of come down I always um attribute it to like a baseball style t-shirt where you see a blue sleeve or something and then like a white body and this one, that sleeve would be starting way up here. And then it almost does kind of follow the line of the shoulder. So that's interesting. But when I block it, we'll really see how it fits. As of right now, I can't see it being an issue. It's just, I guess I would question if I want to knit another raglan in this style. But overall, so far, I'm very happy with how this turned out out. At this point, I have not yet heard back since I sent my last bit of notes to the designer for the issues that I found throughout the pattern. So I will certainly keep you updated when those changes have been made. So until then, I would just say that if you're interested in knitting a basic sweater like this one, I would maybe shop around if you've never knit a raglan sweater before. If you've already knit a raglan sweater top down, you should be completely fine to follow this pattern and just kind of keep your guard up as you go because it's a beautiful design and I love that about it. And the designer's been very kind and receptive, but she's been busy at the Madrid Fiber Festival thing. So just I'm assuming that she's going to make the changes that we've discussed. They have not yet been made, and I will definitely keep you posted when they have. But for now, I'm very pleased. That's the Seclement Sweater by Cecilia Garcia Rodrigo. And as of today, this has been in progress for 28 days. I will actually try to get this blocked tonight. So hopefully just a couple days more, and I will be wearing it in the next podcast. So the Cyclamen sweater, all said and done, the pattern price for that sweater is $8.51. However, it was gifted to me by a fellow subscriber. So thank you so much again for gifting that pattern. The yarn that I used had I purchased it at full price would have been $12.99 per ball or per cake. And I did purchase this on sale. So for me, it was $9.09 .09 a cake. I wound up tapping into three balls for the whole project. And so if I had purchased that yarn at full price, that would have been $38.97. However, as I did buy it on sale, it was $27.27. .27. And without any additional expenses, there were no other things I needed to add to this one. I wound up spending $27.27 .27 on this pattern. However, had I purchased the pattern myself, as well as the yarn at full price, it would have been $47.48. That's the spreadsheet. <laughs> okay, now without putting this off any longer, let's go ahead and talk about my dad's sweater. This is the aftermath of the sweater surgery. So if you're new here, I knit my dad a sweater for his birthday. And when I gifted it to him on his birthday, it was just a little bit short. So I figured I would be the brave knitter that I am and go ahead and try sweater surgery for the first time. So my intention was to pick up the stitches on the body and then also just above the ribbing, you know, using lifelines so that I could then snip in between, go ahead and add the extra length in the body and then sew those two back together. And I basically just kind of kept running into this pause when I would think about the fact that anytime I've seen people do this before, it's been on stockinette fabric. And my dad's sweater is made up of these wide spans at six by one rib throughout the whole 
sweater. By the way, I should mention, the pattern is Learn to Knit a Men's Sweater by Stacey Perry, and it was knit up in Cascade 220 Superwash in the colorway Jet. So after doing some research, I actually followed a Stacey Perry Very Pink Knits tutorial on adding the lifeline into ribbing, where you essentially add two lifelines, one is going through the right leg of all of your knit stitches on the front of the fabric, and then another is actually going through the right leg of all of those purl stitches that appear as knit stitches on the wrong side of the fabric, on the wrong side of the fabric, so that you don't have to worry about which part of the purl stitch you're picking up. You are simply picking up knit stitches again. But this was way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. It took hours to essentially put in four lifelines. I decided to put the first one in just above the ribbing so that I could use the ribbing as my best reference of which row I was going into. So it took some time to get around the whole right side of the fabric. Then it took some time to get around the whole wrong side of the fabric. Then I had to do the same thing a few rows up, closer into the body of the sweater. Took a few hours. This was a full day activity. Wow. All right, you guys, I am <laughs> performing some sweater surgery and you can hear the anxiety in my voice as I say this. So what I've done already is I went ahead and inserted a lifeline here. And so this is gonna be the lifeline that's holding my ribbing while I continue to add length to the sweater. I figured it would be easier to add the lifeline at the top of the ribbing first so that I could see exactly kind of where that is and use that as my reference. Now, this sweater is knit with these wide spans of ribbing. For the majority of this sweater, it's a six by one rib. And so I was really nervous about not picking up the columns of pearls properly. And so what people said to do was actually flip the fabric over and find those pearls as they appear as knits on the other side. Now, actually the way I have this right now is a little bit misleading because this was actually how I did it. So I started, I think this is my beginning of round over here. And so that's where I started by picking up. First, I did the knits going all the way around and then I flipped the whole thing inside out and picked up the pearls, like I said, as they appear as knits on the other side. So now I'm gonna go back to my beginning of round. That's over here. And I am using a metal needle that has, this sweater was knit using a US six needle. And in the ribbing, it was a US five. So I'm using the US five right now to pick up the stitches. And because I've never done this before, I wanna give myself a little bit of leeway so I know I've heard people say that you can go ahead and just pick up like two rows up. I'm gonna give myself, I think, two rows in between so that I have a little bit of room because essentially once I put this in here, I'm going to be snipping and frogging. <laughs> so I think it'll be easier now that I have this pink yarn in here. So I am looking at my stitches. And again, this is my beginning of round. So we're gonna do one, two, I'm gonna go to the third stitch down and I'm picking up the right leg of my stitch. So 
Hopefully now this will be easier since I have the pink in there, I can see, but this is the issue with this yarn is that it's so dark and also the marling kind of, or the, the sort of heathering that it has does not make this any easier. But this is kind of how I've been doing it. So I've been kind of getting my needle in there so that I could start my straight line and then I kind of pull back. And when I see the corresponding knit stitch, I grab it. Now this part's a little tricky because I apparently was weaving, I had woven an end here. So I'm struggling a little bit to see it, but I'm gonna just pull this closer. So one, two, we're gonna go three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? It's you. <laughs> Come with me. It kind of doesn't want to. All right, because I wove in that, those stitches there, I will actually, I think, can I unweave that? My goodness. Yeah, all right, let's unweave these ends. Will that be easier to see now? Stretching out the fabric. Again, I'm gonna go one, two, maybe even just the second will be easier. One, two, it's right here I'm struggling with. Like what is a stitch and what is an end woven in? All right, this is what we've got going on right now. So I'm gonna do this all the way around, picking up the right leg of each stitch and just leaving that one in the middle. I hope that this works. <laughs> I have been so nervous to do this that I've literally put it off like for days just telling myself like, oh, I'll do it when the sun's out. <laughs> Although that is a big part of it. I have like all the windows open right now. Just trying to get this done. And like I said, as I kind of lose my way, I'll either kind of just open up the fabric a little bit so I can see, you know, more definition between the stitches. I think if you're doing this on lighter yarn, it would be a heck of a lot easier. But as I am not, this is what we got going on. I'm glad that I put that one in before doing this row because even as it is, I'm so nervous that I, at some point, my issue is that like basically you're, you're picking up stitches until you approach one of these little valleys being the pearl row. And I just felt like every time I was trying to cross a pearl row, <laughs> I was trying to cross one of these little rivers, it was hard to figure out like exactly what row I was even in anymore. Like I just kept second guessing it, but this is a lot easier now. So picking them up. I actually feel like I almost should have timed this. Let's see. Now keep in mind too, that I already have done this once. I have two fears right now. One is that I definitely feel like I did not stay in my row the whole time. And two is I feel like I might have even like split a few stitches throughout. So I'm a little bit nervous that, although what do I even do if I approach that? So, okay. That is where we are at. By the way, this was exactly how I had done this 
the first time. I just, once I had finished getting all the stitches onto the needles, slipped them onto a cord. I am not going to slip them onto a cord for this row because this is essentially the half that I will be working. We are also currently 14, 15 or so minutes into this gonna pop that on okay so now here comes the part that is specific because I am doing this in a ribbed fabric flipping this whole thing inside out now this is the issue because I I don't have long enough cords for this but I'm trying to make do with what I have so let us get this out of the way now this is also where I just un unweaved unwove my ends as you can see here, I have to start picking up where the pearls on the right side are appearing as my knits on the wrong side. And the easiest way I figured to do this when I started was like you can kind of see here that needle behind these stitches. I could see that before in the, the pink cable on the other side. So now it should be a little bit easier because I know that I'm just picking up one knit below where I had before, but I'm gonna do that all the way around. Picking up this stitch and I have to do that now all the way around. Still only picking up the right leg. Oof. Almost makes me wish I had like readers or something. Darn you, 2020 vision. This is why I almost feel like this would have even been easier if I was doing this in a one by one ribbing or something. Like these spans of stitches are just so long that I'm like, what if I'm jumping up and down different rows as I go? Like then what? <laughs> The knit, the one in between, the one that I need. Once I got those lifelines in, I went ahead and I snipped. <laughs> if I'm doing this right, I gotta cut this stitch here. Wish me luck. And... I think that I had sort of built this whole thing up in my head where like when I snipped, it was going to be like a cartoon where suddenly the stitches were just <laughs> until suddenly there would be like no sweater left. <laughs> but that was not the case. I was modest with how much room I left between those lifelines because at this point I really didn't want to do any more work than I already was and that I already had to. So I really gave myself one row, which meant that I had to physically unpick that row of knit stitches. That took a couple hours. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna work my way down the whole thing doing this and I will come back in the end. This, I mean, that's already been like 10 minutes of work, so I'll be back. All right, we're at the end here, so I've just cut the yarn because it's getting a little bit more difficult to manage. So by then I had this floating around on its lifeline. Also all of these light bulb stitch markers as I was removing the row in between, I would come across a stitch that I couldn't tell whether or not it was on the lifeline. So I put a stitch marker in it. <laughs> And I think it wound up turning out that that was basically just every time there was a pearl. And so it was sitting on the second lifeline that I had. Um, so I actually just took out that second lifeline and had these stitches on <laughs> the stitch markers, which would have been so much easier. 
So if you are ever doing a lifeline where you have something like a six by one rib, I would recommend just going through the right leg of all of your knit stitches and simply putting a stitch marker <laughs> into all of your pearls because that would take so much less time than what I did. But I had this. I had this. This was the yarn that was cut out and just seemed useless to reuse in this state. And then I had the body of the sweater with its lifeline on it. So I, I said, put this thing aside because I can't even look at it right now. It just, it took so long. We're talking hours. So I sat down with the sweater and now I have two lifelines right behind each other. So I had two sets of needles. And I had to then go in with another set of needles to slip all of those stitches onto one long set of needles and marry now my two lifelines back into one. So I think those stitches, yeah, they're just like stuck together. And this is so interesting. From day one with this yarn, I've experienced a lot of variation from ball to ball in the texture and the, the working feeling of the yarn. So I've had some that have felt very bouncy and lively and then some that felt very stretched out and sad. And from the moment I mentioned that, I had people saying, that doesn't sound like super wash yarn. And I said, no, it, it is. I had eight balls of this yarn and each one of them I checked, they said, Cascade 220, super wash. They were all the same lot, everything. So, so that was the first time someone mentioned that. Then I said, you know, it didn't grow as much as I expected it to in blocking. That's why it wound up being as short as it was because I had, again, these sort of cartoonish visions of this, like, oh, <laughs> just losing all shape when I blocked it. I'm not very familiar with superwash yarn. So then that didn't happen. And again, I had people saying, that doesn't sound like superwash. I said, no, guys, like it says superwash on the label. I've checked. It is. And then, as I'm slipping these stitches onto my new needles, a lot of them had sort of felted themselves together. So now for the first time, I'm thinking, <laughs> that doesn't sound like super wash. I have absolutely no idea what the whole situation is here. I just know that the sweater surgery was a nightmare. And I got those stitches slipped over. I wound up having to physically almost snip these little fibers that were strangling two stitches or sometimes four stitches together or pulling them or leaving them as little felted together stitches, but having to remember to knit them separately. And... I got all of it onto the new needles. At that point, I decided there is an option in the pattern to knit short rows to make the back longer than the front. I went ahead and I did that. However, the pattern calls for wrap and turn. And in my experience doing that, I always get holes with wrap and turn. So I decided to swap those out for German short rows, which meant that I had to knit. Now I can't remember, but it's either one stitch or but past or one such before what's called for in the pattern. I followed another Stacey Perry pattern for that. So we kept it in the family for this one. But I went ahead and did that. In the pattern, she says to do those short rows and then immediately go into the I-cord edge. But since I wasn't doing the I-cord edge as I swapped that out on my sweater for two by two ribbing on cuffs and hem, I decided to actually add in the short rows a little bit higher so that when it came to sewing the ribbing back on later, I wouldn't have short rows in my path. And I wanted a little bit of regular knitting in between my short rows and the hem of the sweater. 
In hindsight, it would look better had I done those short rows at the very end before the hem because the whole sweater is made up of these very long columns of that six by one ribbing. And so when you do the short rows, it did want to kind of kick out those columns, those pinstripes so that they kind of go <laughs> after being blocked. It's really not that noticeable, but it would have been better to do at the end. So keep that in mind if you are going to add short rows to a pattern with ribbing <laughs> or this pattern in general. So then I added, I measured out the ribbing was actually, it's three inches with the sewn bind off and everything. And that was what I figured the sweater was about as short as a three inch. It was about as short as the waistband or the hem of this sweater was. So I went ahead and added three inches in my six by one rib and then came time to attach the ribbing back to the sweater. And I sat down with this thing on my couch for all of 10, 15 minutes. And so many of these stitches were just felted together. So I was over it. And to be honest, at this point, I did not want to learn how to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. <laughs> and I figured that the amount of time I spent stressing about doing the sweater surgery and trying to figure it out, that was a couple days, right? So I, I actually... Today that I'm filming is Thursday. I gifted this to my dad last Sunday, right? No. Are we talking two weeks ago now? You know, I'm all mixed up. But days had passed between giving my dad, yes, because, yeah, yeah, because I'm filming now a second podcast since gifting it to him. So days had passed between gifting it to my dad, taking it back, thinking about how to do the sweater surgery, sitting down to do the sweater surgery, the full day being taken by the sweater surgery, then a day of knitting the extra three inches to then dedicate another day to sew this stupid thing back on. I was just not interested. And I was like, I could have been done. <laughs> the whole thing could have been done in a day or two had I just ripped back. And I knew that going into it, that would be the quicker option for me, but it was more of a learning experience that I wanted to take care. But by the time this was supposed to go back on, I don't even want to look at it. I was so annoyed. I was so over this. And I just said, no, I'm knitting my ribbing. I knit the ribbing while watching the Super Bowl. That's right. This That was this past Sunday. So it's already been almost two weeks since I gave my dad the sweater. So yes, I knit the ribbing while watching the Super Bowl. I did my little rearranging of that two by two ribbing. I did the bind off all was well. It is now blocked. I have yet to try it on. So we will do that today. And I think it's I think it's fine now. I do think that there's a slight, I don't want to use the word jog, but a little bit of a, it's a little bit noticeable where I had put the lifeline in, not from the lifeline, but from those stitches being felted together. There's a few spots where it's a little bit more open than others. And I tried when I was blocking to kind of finagle those stitches a little bit, but I'm curious to see with something underneath it how it will look if you'll actually be able to see through those holes. So I'm going to try that on once I'm done filming here. So for now, I'll show you. The, you'll see the close-ups, but I haven't tried it on yet as I'm filming. It is here. It is longer. It definitely looks more. I mean, the sleeves are still longer than the body, which we were kind of referencing my boyfriend's sweaters which none of them have the sleeves longer than the body, but I think we're good here. I think we are. So it is done. In the end, I'm very happy to recommend this pattern. All of my issues were nothing to do with the pattern. It was just the link that I knit it to. <laughs> I've actually been chatting with someone on Instagram who is knitting this same sweater for her husband. And she asked me, if you were to do it again, what would you do differently? I said, first of all, you're going to knit those short rows. 
Because in the pattern, Stacey Perry says that the short rows were a specific request of the man she was knitting it for, and that most people she would imagine did not want those short rows. So when I was knitting this, I figured, okay, we don't need the short rows, but I think you do. I think that for a guy to who's going to wear a sweater like this, he'd probably appreciate that little bit of extra length in the back. The color is so hard to tell, but I think that you can see that little bit of a difference. It gave me about an inch extra in the back, which is all I felt like it needed. So I told her, definitely do that. And then I said, she asked, would you put short rows in the, the back of the neck at the top of the back because there aren't any. And I said, you know what? I would. Because when I've had this on to try it on, I've noticed that the collar back here, it winds up being kind of pulled down a little bit so that when you're wearing it, it's kind of doing... Uh, and I even tried to block this in such a way that it is kind of pulled up more. So I think that that helps a little bit. But I would definitely say if you want to knit this sweater, I would add short rows in the back. You don't need much, maybe an inch, honestly, maybe even less. But just something to raise that back of the neck a little bit. Then those short rows just before the bind off and this will be perfection. Overall, I could not recommend this enough. It is a fantastic basic. It looks so professional. It's simple enough that your kind of fussier guys are going to be okay with it because it's not cables. It's not over the top. It's stuck in that with those little pinstripes of pearls that I think give it more of just a classy, again, with your simple sweaters, it's all in those little details. So I love that about this. The zipper install, I'm still gushing over because I think it's just so good, so professional looking. And overall, I'm super happy. After I finished the bottom, what I did was I actually hung the sweater over the side of the tub while I was blocking this. When I block my garments, I actually take a like storage Tupperware tub and put that inside of my bathtub and I fill that with water and, you know, my wool wash and everything. So I hung the sweater over the side of the tub so so that only the part that I had knit, re-knit, was in there for the first 15 minutes or so. And then what I did was just kind of put in another like inch or two of fabric so that it was just kind of helping to marry those two sections for the next 10 minutes or so without doing a full, full reblock because the rest of it was blocked really well. So, so, so happy with this. In the end, I did wind up, I tapped in, that's how I'm going to refer to this um, I tapped into my full eight balls. However, I have all of this still and I have all of this still. So my eighth ball still has a full 79 grams on it. And I obviously could have, I, I wound up needing this just for the ribbing at the bottom. I could have torn this out and used this, but with the felting and just with the squiggly yarn, I just wasn't interested. So I figure... Between these two things, I have about 100 grams of yarn. Um, maybe I'll make my dad a matching hat or something with it. For now, I don't ever want to look at this anytime soon, so I'm just going to put it away like that. But yes, the Learn to Knit a Men's Sweater Pattern by Stacey Perry is complete. And so I guess we tacked on about two weeks to the overall make time. That being said, too, I forgot to give you some finishing stats for the Cicla Men, so I will film that now and go put it back in there. But also for this sweater, I have my spreadsheet. <laughs> Dad's sweater, the pattern cost was $8. I did not yet have that in my library. I purchased the Cascade 220 Superwash in the colorway Jet. That's number 913 for that project. If I had purchased that yarn at full price, it would have been $11.50 a skein or a ball. However, I bought it at Webs where you get a discount based on how much you spend. So my price per ball was $9.20. 
I use a total of eight balls of that yarn, which means that had I purchased it full price, I would have spent $92 on the yarn. However, with the sale, I spent $73.60 on the yarn. My additional expenses included the zipper, and with that, with the pattern, with the yarn, my total spent was $82.90, and had I spent everything full price, it would have been $101.30. And I think that's interesting because I hear so many people talk about Cascade being a very reasonably priced or cheaper yarn. And I feel like, I mean, $80 for a sweater is, it's, it's, it's money. <laughs> it's money spent, but I'm, it's, it's perfect for my dad. So I'm very happy with the end result here. So that's that. Okay. Next up here, we have a whip and we have an acquisition, a big acquisition. <laughs> so let's talk first about my whip. Some of you guessed it in the last video that I am indeed knitting on my folklore cardigan by Lion Brand. It's a free pattern for my little cousin who is a Swifty. And this is where we are at right now. This has now been on the needles for three days, and I actually just made it through, and you can see on this diamond here, I just made it through the first full repeat. So I'm knitting this in, everything's connected here, the, the Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn, and this is their white colorway. I think it's called Fisherman, but it, it might not be. Um... So it's just there. There, it's a cream color. It's a beautiful color for these cables. I mean, you can see the texture and the morning sun are really playing well together today. <laughs> this is a free pattern. Let me let me backtrack a little bit. My aunt asked if I would knit this up for my little cousin, her granddaughter. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna call her my little cousin, but it's my cousin's daughter. And my aunt is a crocheter. Primarily, she dabbles in knitting, but she said her hands could not do this. So she asked if I would, and I said, of course. So she purchased this kit from the Mary, Meryl, Meryl, Meryl Lynn, Meryl, Mary, Mary, Mary Maxim, Mary Maxim <laughs> website. It came in a kit. So it came with the pattern. It's a free pattern. It came printed out. And then also with all the yarn that I need for it, this is knit up in pieces and then seamed together. So I am currently working on the back panel. However, I have made some changes. So for starters, my cousin is super, super, super petite. So even the smallest size in the pattern would be too big on her. It says that it's a small medium and that bus circumference is intended to be about 45 inches, which is like my bus circumference. And I think I could fit two of her inside of most of my clothes, maybe, maybe three of her. <laughs> so I wanted to try and shrink this down without disrupting the beautiful cables. The best way I could figure to do that was, first of all, trying to see the smallest size needle I could possibly knit this on comfortably comfortably. So I am knitting this on a US 6 four millimeter needle when the intended knitting needle size in the pattern is 5.5 millimeters. So I've gone down a full 1.5 millimeters. Mm? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was the first thing that I did. And this is actually a great gauge for me. I did a gauge swatch in the moss stitch and I steam blocked that. I figure I will maybe steam it, maybe not, but I don't know. I, I figured if I was trying not to let it grow too much, I would just steam block it. But if I want to wash it, so I, I don't know, but I just wanted to get what was the smallest comfortable. My aunt said just knitted it in the smallest size and that should be fine. But I actually had my cousin, because now that I've learned, I had my cousin send me some measurements of my Emma's, <laughs> Emma's the recipient here, of Emma's favorite sweater. And she did a flat lay. She took pictures of the measuring tape on the fat. I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. So laid out flat, measuring the width of the body of her favorite 
oversized sweater. The measurement was 15, almost 15 and a half inches. So we're talking 30 to 31 inches when this, <laughs> the smallest size wanted 45 inches. I was like, I cannot do that to her. Yes, she'll grow into it. Maybe, I don't know. I'm the biggest person in my family, so they're pretty small. And realistically, this is a Taylor Swift cardigan. So I don't know how long she's going to be into Taylor Swift. I don't want to knit her something that she can't wear until she's 25 years old. Like, I want her to be able to wear it now. And proudly, she is petite. So I'm assuming that a lot of her, you know, she probably has trouble finding clothes that fit her nicely that she likes. So I want this to fit her well. It's going to be a little oversized because the only place that I really felt comfortable removing stitches from this pattern was in these moss sections. And so I really took out two stitches from either side of this, meaning that I only shrunk it down by four stitches. However, at the moment, without this stretched out, without it being blocked, this panel is measuring in at about 14.5 stitches wide. I'm very proud of myself that we've managed to get this to a place where even if I wet block it, it should be just right. So, so happy with that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about, I don't know if you've noticed this pink thread hanging from the bottom. So, the... <laughs> This sweater is intended to be knit from the bottom up pieces. So you start with the back panel, you start with the ribbing. I just didn't love the idea of knitting the ribbing separately and then sewing that together. Plus, the pattern doesn't specify how to cast on, but if I'm doing one by one ribbing, I would want an Italian cast on to get that really nice, sleek edge. So I figured, you know what? Make life easy. I did a provisional cast on following yet another Stacey Perry tutorial where it's a crochet provisional cast on. I used a pink cotton yarn for that cast on and cast on my stitches with the wool ease into it so that I can knit the back panel and then I started straight away with the cables. I'm going to knit the back panel, then I will knit the front two panels when everything's done, I will sew the side seams together, and then I will go in and remove my provisional cast on, pick up, and knit the one-by-one -one ribbing with a beautiful Italian tubular bind off at the bottom. First of all, that scratched my itch of wanting to just dive into the cables, and also I think that that's going to really help resolve everything and make sure that it is super tidy when it's all said and done. So I'm very happy with that choice so far. Now, this pattern, oof, the the notes in people's Ravelry projects, are they're comical. <laughs> if you're looking for a, a good read, you want a good chuckle, go read the notes on those patterns. People are ruthless. <laughs> and with reason, this is not the best written pattern I've ever seen. It's free, but essentially the <laughs> the cables in the back here all have these stupid <laughs> stupid names of narrow left cable and wide left cable and left cable and then center cable and then the moss stitch and they just sort of list in the pattern those different headlines of narrow left cable and then how it's done and what's really particularly funny to me is that then when it comes time to knit such cables and the whole cable work section of this pattern, it it says, like, knit the narrow left cable over the next however many stitches, then knit the wide left cable over the next however many stitches. And so you would think that then when you go over to the page, because it's a different page, where all of the instructions for those individual cables are, you think that when you go over there, you're going to see them in chronological order. They're not. Kind of ridiculous. So I did see some people in their Ravelry pages included charts that they made up, but it was such a huge chart and the little thing, it was so small. No, no, thank you. I, I wasn't interested. I don't mind following charts, but for this, I just, I wasn't in the mood. You know, that's what it was. So I made a chart, not a chart. I made a spreadsheet 
since I've now made it through one full repeat, I have updated my spreadsheet. But basically, everything, all of the cables surrounding the center cable are, are more or less worked up in four row repeats. Then the center cable, the diamond that you see, is a 24 row repeat. So I made a spreadsheet with 24 rows and repeated those four row repeats in chronological order on my spreadsheet with the key. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to see this, but you, you get the idea. Um, I included every time there's a cable row, I've put a blue line going through it so that I know to grab my cable needle. I have made the center cable in this pink so that I know things are changing because for the most part, other than the cable rows, everything else is just sort of knitting what you see, but not the center cable. And then they use some really funky abbreviations for their cables. So I just put that key at the bottom here. I'm going to work through this one more time and then I will probably just throw it up on the Ravelry page for this project so that if you are looking for a <laughs> little help, I've got you. So I imagine I'll do the same thing when it comes to the front panels. Uh, in retrospect, if I were to make another change, I did notice someone else had done this. All of these cables are turning and twisting the same way. I probably would have had them all spiraling out, but I didn't realize that until I was already in the thick of it and it's on the back. Who cares? But I'm very happy so far with how this is looking. It's not very mindless yet, but I actually think that once I get in a little bit better of a groove with it and don't feel like I have to check the the chart, the pattern, I'll I'll be cruising through it a little bit more. But also, <laughs> it must be nice if you are this tiny to knit because when I knit something, I'm usually knitting double the width of this for myself. But for little Miss Emma, she gets to have, <laughs> this isn't a lot of knitting. So I've really put hours into this. It's not been a ton of time and I've made a good amount of progress so far. And I think I have to knit this up to like 11 inches. I don't know, whatever it said in the pattern, but I am like almost halfway there. So yeah, that's nice because it's for a little petite lady. So I am on day three of knitting this. I also have put a countdown now onto my iPad of when Easter is because we should be celebrating Easter with my cousins. And so I'd love to get this to her for Easter, which at the time I'm filming this is 44 days away. So that's the goal to get this done for her for Easter. If things keep going the way that they have been, then that shouldn't be too big a deal. I think I need to put this in a project bag because I have a lot going on with this. I also, of course, went ahead and marked out each individual section with my stitch markers. And then I put my little Black Pearl Magic teddy bears on the center cable so that I would just know that's where we're at. But it's not too bad especially if you follow my spreadsheet. So if you want to knit this too, then make sure you're following me on Instagram because I will let you know on Instagram in my stories when I do wind up uploading this, I think to Ravelry, unless there's a better way to share it. But for now, that is my folklore cardigan by Lion Brand and it's been on the needles for three days. Okay, so <laughs> I said I have a big acquisition and I mean it. Now, I'm never going to make this disclaimer again because I don't feel that I should apologize for these things, but I am going to just say it this one time in case you're curious of just how I think about these things. I knit most of the time using thrifted yarn, using sale yarn, using discounted yarn, using a lot of stash yarn, and rarely, never have I ever purchased a really expensive yarn. And so when the occasion calls for it, I'm okay with it. A few weeks ago, I had popped into a yarn shop where I actually purchased my mindful cords, the swivel cords for my needles. And while I was in there, I'd never been there before. I was just in the area. While I was there, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm being cryptic. It's called the sh uh, In Sheep's Clothing is the yarn store. So while I was in there, I was just poking around. I was looking at the yarn and 
something caught my eye. And it was a full bag of the Noro Madara Sake colorway. If you saw my winter knitting plans video, you might remember that I had mentioned it would be a dream of mine to work with that yarn, but it sold out everywhere. So I saw it there that day and it was tucked away. It was like kind of hidden. It was like, it wasn't where it should have been. So, ooh, that's exciting. But I figured if, if she had so much of it, it probably had come back in stock. Anyway, I didn't go in there that day to buy it. I came home and I looked it up online and out of stock, out of stock. And I looked everywhere. I was looking on all the websites I normally would. I looked up on just everywhere and it said it was out of stock. And then I had that feeling of like, oh, no one else has it. <laughs> so I spoke with my boyfriend and it was Valentine's Day. My birthday's coming up and we got the yarn. <laughs> so I called the shop yesterday on Valentine's Day, yesterday morning. And I was like, and I, I already kind of psyched myself out of this because I said, it's been weeks now. I'm sure that it's sold. So I won't get excited. But let me call. Let me see if they have it. I'll go get it. That'll be great. So I called up. I said, do you happen to have that still in stock? And she said, yes. <laughs> so I took a full drive to go get this. And I purchased a bit of it. <laughs> this is the bag she gave me, by the way. Very cute bag. I could probably use this as a project bag. Here it is. This was pricey. <laughs> I don't want to crinkle at you, so I will hold this up here. But I purchased 12 skeins of the Noro Madara and the colorway sake. This yarn is 60% wool, 30% silk, and 10% alpaca. And it is essentially this like gray base that has these specks of colors. Um spun into it. <laughs> Jeez. From here, even I imagine from your view, it really does create this wash of gray, neutral. But up close, you see all these beautiful flecks of color. And I had seen the pattern, the sand cardigan by Ulan Knitwear popping around a little bit earlier, I think later last year. And it's this duster length, sort of floor length, not quite floor, ankle length cardigan, double knit button placket no buttons, pockets, cozy, simple. And I thought, man, I wish I could have something like that in a yarn like this. And now I'm gonna. <laughs> this yarn's not expensive. Or not expensive. It's, it is expensive. This yarn isn't cheap. All of this together, and I realized that she didn't give me the receipt, but I'll try and double check. I can't remember now if it was 316, 325. Let's call it $320 for all of this yarn. It's a lot of yarn and it's excellent quality yarn. And I said I wasn't going to apologize for it because, because I don't need to. <laughs> so I'm very excited to own it. I literally spent a good portion of the day yesterday just kind of holding it. I wish I had time to actually work on this yesterday, but I didn't, and I probably won't today either, but I'm very much looking forward to this. So the vision I have here is with the wool silk content, I like that this is going to be a not-so-warm layering piece. I feel warned by Casey from Young Folk Knits that when she worked with her Noro Madara yarn, it really grew in blocking. And since I am planning on knitting a ankle length cardigan, I'm going to be mindful. In fact, I'm probably going to try this one on as I go <laughs> as much as I don't like to do that. But it's good yarn. It's expensive yarn. So we should make sure that it is just going perfectly. So I might block it a few times throughout the process. But 
If you didn't know, I'm a bridal hairstylist, and oftentimes between spring and fall, I'm leaving the house between 4 and 8 a.m., but usually closer to that 4 a.m. mark. And it's freezing (laughs) and dark when I'm leaving the house in the morning. But then I get to where I'm going, and I'm working, and I have hot tools, and I'm hot. And then I get out, and it's like a warm, beautiful, sunny day. So I really don't have anything that gets me kind of from point A to point B other than a leather jacket, which then I kind of feel ridiculous showing up anywhere in a leather jacket at six in the morning. And also it's then way too hot to wear that once I'm done working or even while I'm working, I can't wear that. So I really like the idea of something that will be, first of all, really cozy and comfy to wear to where I'm going because it is so early. And then once I get there, I don't have to like rip it off and start working. I should be able to work in it for a little bit. And I'm picturing this with jeans and a white t-shirt and little booties or sandals or what ever sneakers. And because it's this neutral with the colorful specks in it, It should go with literally everything. I could wear this with all black underneath or like I said, jeans and a white t-shirt, but then pick up on any one of these little colors at any given point and do that too. So I'm so excited to own this. I'm very proud of how hard I've worked to earn this and I'm excited to work with it. So this will be turning into the sand cardigan by Ulin Knitwear any day now. I will gauge swatch first. So kind of trying to wrap my head around a few other things before I dive in. And then that will be a great project to kind of wrap up winter. (laughs) So all that being said, I hope you can be excited with me for that yarn. Um, We invested in this together. And I'd love to let you know how it is. So if it comes back in stock, then you can determine if it's worth the, the money to you. And I'm just excited to work with some luxury fibers. So yeah, I think it's going to be timeless classic in my wardrobe. So it's definitely worth the, the investment here. And I'm also kind of hoping that I overbought a little bit, considering that it should weigh down and stretch out a little bit. I went based off of the yardage for my assumed size and a little bit of wiggle room there so that I wouldn't run out. But in a perfect world, there's some left over and we can make something else out of it anyway, but very excited about it. So if you're excited with me, then I think you should come hang out with us more often. Perhaps you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe, ring the bell so that you're notified when videos just like this one go up. And yeah, I'd love to see you again. (laughs) <laughs> if you like to stay up to date in a little bit more real time, I do post on my Instagram stories most often. So just make sure that you're following me over there at aka Nora Knits. And all that being said, you guys, big ol' thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one. All right. Bye.